Second point is be realistic. Be realistic. And what do I mean by be realistic? Is be, be biblical, right? Because the Bible is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So be realistic. And I just thought of this verse here, just to share this point. 1 John 2, 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So the reason why I'm turning to this verse is, you know, when, when we talk about being realistic, being biblical, often the reason why we're not realistic and we're not biblical is because we've been watching too much Hollywood, right? We've been watching too much drama. We've been we're reading too many uh, romantic novels or whatever. And we have this skewed view of what relationship really is, what marriage really is, what romance really is. And, you know, not saying that, you know, all the stuff that we see on the movies and in Hollywood is necessarily fake because it comes from something, right? It's just that it's a skewed view of what life should be. You know, in Hollywood, there are certain themes that make the flesh tick. You know, the romance, the passion, the lust. And, and that's what you're going to see because that's what sells, right? So if that's the only place you're getting that perspective, you're going to have this skewed view that this is what, is this what marriage all should be and this is how it should be like because I saw Brad Pitt do it. Right? I saw this movie star do it. And, and if you expect that from your wife or your husband, you're not going to be realistic. You're getting a skewed view on the reality of, of marriage. If you want the reality, it's in Ephesians 5. We're not going to turn there, but we went through that last week. Um, so, you know, Hollywood is not what you're striving for. And what we see in Hollywood about relationships and marriage, it's not what you're striving for because it's fake. Um, it's often a biased and skewed view of life. And, you know, like the Bible says here, the world, it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And that's what, me that's what sells. Because spirituality takes effort to walk in, right? But it doesn't take any effort at all to follow your flesh. And that's why marketing, it's all about ap appealing to the flesh, appealing to covetousness, appealing to the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. Um, so it, it emphasizes the fleshly side of relationships is what you see in movies and in drama. And a couple of just examples I have here is, you know, like number one, like one for, for example, is, you know, you don't have to always eat at the most expensive places. You know, when you take somebody out to eat, I mean, you know, you, like for a guy, you don't have to take her to the most fanciest restaurant every single time and blow 150 bucks, 200 bucks every time you go dating. You know what I mean? And, and for ladies, you shouldn't expect that. You know, like, don't expect a guy to just blow all his hard-earned money just going out and eating, fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Like, if he, if he takes you somewhere a bit more, you know, low-key, you shouldn't be like, oh, this guy's a cheapskate. I mean, is, is, is that what you're there for? Are you, are you dating just to get the food? You know, I thought you are there, like, to talk to the guy. Does it matter where you are or what you're eating? So just things like that where people get this, like, oh, we're going on a date and it's candlelit dinner and we've got table service and it costs, like, $300. You know, to some people, 300 bucks might not be a lot of money, but I think to most of us, that's, that's a lot of money. And I don't know, it's not necessarily wrong to do. I'm just saying the expectation. You know, be realistic. Uh, be biblical in your expectations. That's one example. You know, another is, you know, don't expect to be just showered with gifts. You know, some girls just expect, you know, this guy's dating me and showering me with gifts and, and, and expecting that as opposed to uh, going into dating, you know, being serving right and 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 thinking about what god would want and and thinking about is this relationship going to work and going to please god uh, i just want to show you this uh this <laughs> i touched on it a couple of weeks ago but elizabeth she saved this picture but she forgot to share it with me but just this idea you know we talk about realistic expectations you know we talked about the soulmate and you know this one person for me so you know if you go in with that wrong expectation you might be disappointed and, you know, see, you see these things on Facebook. You know, imagine a man so focused on God that the only reason he looked up to see you is because he heard God say, that's her. And, you know, it sounds great, right? You get a warm, fuzzy feeling when you see this on Facebook. But is that true? That's not true. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, God never said to me, and this is what I'm going to talk about today. And God never said to me, you know, that's her. You know, as a, you know so, you know, we over-spiritualize things and they sound good, but they're not true. And this is why I'm saying, you know, be realistic 
uh, be biblical uh, and not have this idea that we got from Hollywood and movies. You know, this idea that there's just this one perfect person for you and there's nobody else. And, you know, even to the point where people don't even want that other person liking another person. It's like if that person had dated somebody else before, or liked somebody else before, it's like it's, just, it's like ruined it for them. Because it's like, I want to be the only one that they ever liked and they ever got with. And, you know, this idea, it, it's not realistic. Um, you know, it reminds me of uh, uh, Asian movies. If you watch... If you've ever watched like Asian romance movies, the story is always very similar. You know, there's one, one guy and he's after this girl and you know, they're, they're like, you know, childhood sweethearts and this girl, he, she really likes this guy. But when he works up the courage to go and, and, and approach this girl, she's already with somebody else. And it's like, oh, it's like the opportunity's missed. And then when she breaks up with that guy and then she thinks, oh, okay, I'm going to go talk to him. And now he's with somebody else. It's like that opportunity's already, always missed. And then when they're finally both single, right? And then they have this chance to get together, one of them dies in a car crash or something like that. It's just like, oh, it was never, it was never meant to be. It's like this tragic ending. Somebody always dies in an Asian movie. At the end, it's always somebody dies, either the lady or the man. Oh, I've seen movies where both of them die at the end. Like, it's like they both die and it's just, nobody can ever have them. Yes. So this, uh, this, this unrealistic expectation, you know, you're not always, you're not always going to be the only one, only crush, you know, that they had, their only choice. And, and that's all right. If you don't expect it, you're not going to be disappointed. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like uh, ladies, you know, like if a guy asks your, your friend out and that doesn't work out and then you sort of have a bad feeling because now he's asking you out and you feel like your second, second choice. So it's just this expectation, you know, not all of us were the first choice and that's fine you know um, a friend at work was saying because we were talking about uh, applying for work and, and getting rejected from a job and all that sort of stuff and even the job I'm doing now like I wasn't the first pick like you know like the, fir the person that actually got the role decided not to take it so then they offered it to me and the boss came to me and said you know you know do you still want the job and I said well of course you know I applied for it didn't I I don't care if I'm first or second pick like I, you know if I wanted it I, I'm going to take it and it's just funny because she was sort of explaining to me, you know, because a lot of people aren't like that. They think, you know, if they're not the first pick and then they're then offered the job, they won't take it just out of pride. And I just think how silly that is. And isn't that the same with, with dating, right? Are you going to give up that opportunity? I mean, this could be the person that you have a blessed marriage together, you serve God together. Are you going to give that up just because you weren't the first pick? Does it matter? You know what I mean? And anyways, well, I was talking about this with another guy at work and, and explaining all what happened. And he's like, yeah, yeah, because those of us who are realistic, we're like, who cares if you're not the first? You got the job. And we were talking about relationships, and he says, you know, you, you know, he says this to girls all the time, you know, he wasn't the first pick, Brad Pitt was the first pick. <laughs> but she couldn't have Brad Pitt, so that's why she got you. <laughs> Something like that. So, um, you know, don't be hard on guys if he's asked your best friend on a date also. And, uh, you know, dating isn't just all glitz and glamour, you know, because in real life, you know, people work. You know what I mean? Like in, 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 in sitcoms, nobody works. They just have time to hang out all the time. Uh, that, that is not real. So, you know, you might have these worldly desires. You know, you might have this impression of how dating should be because you watch too many movies, because you watch too many dramas. And I'm not up here saying that necessarily watching movies are wrong because obviously, you know, this is a movie. Is that wrong? So I can't, you can't take the position that movies and, and even a television is wrong because, you know, a lot of people say it's a sin to have a television in your house. And you say, Victor, you don't have a television in your house. Well, that's because I don't think there's anything worthwhile on television to watch, so there's no point having a television in my house. But in a sense... I wouldn't say that I, wouldn't, I don't have a television in my house because this is a television nowadays, right? You just get Netflix and your computer becomes a television. So it's funny often that people say, oh, you know, get that television out of your house. It's a sin to have a television in your house. And yet they've got five computers and they have Netflix. So, it, you know, it's, it, you don't want to be pharisaical about the rules that you set. But definitely a lot that is on television and a lot that is in the movies is not good. Um, and, you know, I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a Hollywood movie um, that is worth watching. So, you know, that's why it's important to get in church. That's why it's important to make friends here. You know, try and uh, break out of your groups and get to know one another. Uh, that's why I definitely encourage everyone to stay up after for lunch, you know, get to know some people. But the best way to get to know people in this church, and for those of us who are, are regulars here, you know, you go soul winning with somebody, you get to know them really well. So, you know, that's our ministry in this church. You go along soul winning, you start off as a silent partner, and you'll get to know people in this church as you go with different people soul winning. That's the best way to make friends. 
And that's how you're going to change. That's how you're going to affect change in your life. You're probably thinking, you know, it, it's so hard sometimes to change my desires, to change how I live. And often it's because what you're filling your mind with, the friends that you're hanging around. Sometimes it's hard to change habits in your life if you're hanging around people that constantly have these habits. You know, I had this conversation with somebody recently where they were just saying, oh, you know, it's just so hard, you know, to just fall into materialism again and it's hard to do what's right and it's hard to do, you know, the right thing. And I said to them, well, you know, how high is God's priority on your list? You know, how, how high is church on your list? How high is making friends with people in church on your list? Because if you are in a good church, if you're in a church that believed the right thing, that had realistic expectations, that wasn't materialistic, didn't just talk about, oh, you know, how, how much money to make and, and career and blah, 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 you know, that's probably not what you would care about either. And that's why, like in this church, you know, in this church, it's, it's funny because, you know, we don't really glorify women that have college degrees and things like that. You know, we glorify women that want to become mothers and women that have children, and women that want to strive for God's um, pattern of what a woman should strive to be. So women that want to follow that, they're comfortable in this church because this is what we like. This is what the Bible uh, wants a woman to be. So who you hang around is going to change how easy it is for you to walk in the Spirit. So if you're struggling to walk in the Spirit, get around other people that are trying to walk in the Spirit and you'll walk in the Spirit a lot easier. So, you know, I can't say that watching Hollywood movies because <coughs> I'm sure there's a Hollywood movie out there that maybe is good. I don't know. You know, you'd probably be hard pressed to find it. But um, I, you know, I, I, what I what I find mind-boggling is how Christians justify watching some of the movies that are out there. You know, because any movie that's out there that that I know of, even if it seems like it's something that's not so bad, will have something bad in it. And you know, you watch this movie, and maybe it's Batman or whatever. Uh, uh, you watch this movie and that immodest scene will always come up. Either it's two people fornicating or it's a, it's a lady that's dressed immodestly. And you know, even when I was unsaved, like that was an uncomfortable moment. Was it for you guys as well? I just remember watching movies with friends and that immodest scene comes up and it was like so weird because it's like we're watching porno together. And I, like, so it was uncomfortable even when like I was not saved. You know, so it's, it's like, that, like that weird moment that comes up when you're watching a movie with friends and, and it's uh, inappropriate. You know, there are people acting married when they're not. Um, there are godless themes like evolution, godless families, right? Where dad's an idiot, mom knows what's going, mom's the boss of the house, um, things like that that are being promoted. There's foul language, uh, crude jokes. Um, so you know what, if, you know, if you're going to watch these, these Hollywood worldly movies that have this, this smut in them and this sin in them. You know, it's like, don't, like, don't, at least don't advertise it to the world. You know, like some, some Christians, they'll, they'll say, oh, you know, they put on Facebook, I was just at Hoyt Cinema watching this movie. I mean, if you're going to go and watch these Hollywood movies, at least keep it a secret, you know, uh, and not uh, publish it to the world. Don't be a Jonah and get everyone involved in your, in your, in your sin. Um, but, you know, don't, you know, don't promote it with your finances, you know, as well, you know, because every time you go watch a movie, you're paying, you're promoting that movie. The more people go and pay to see that movie, the more they're going to create those sort of movies. So why don't you, you know, use your money to support a church or support things like this, you know, because if we support things like this with our money, more documentaries like this will be made and it's something uh, more of value. So be realistic with your expectations. Don't get your expectations from the world. And from and what do we mean by world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So that's number two. Number three, 